Hello, word nerds. Welcome to this episode of the podcast called The Dictionary. Um, let's see. I think, yes, as long as I've done my math correctly, yesterday was my dad's birthday. So happy birthday, dad. Um, it's a big one. It's the big 7 0 7 0. Uh, I've got a big birthday coming up, so I guess I'll mention that when we get there. The first word for this episode is boniato. Yeah, B-O-N-I-A-T-O, boniato. It is a noun from 1980. A sweet potato having white dry flesh with little sweetness that is usually grown in subtropical regions. I was actually thinking that boniato... Uh, sort of sounded like a potato uh, just at the very end there, but I didn't actually think that it was a sweet uh, kind kind of potato. This is an American Spanish word, perhaps from the Taino word, or is a uh, Taino word. Next is boniface, or boniface. B-O-N-I, and then the word face. Noun from 1742. The proprietor of a hotel, nightclub, or restaurant. This is the word Boniface, uh, with a capital B, who was an innkeeper in the Bose Stratagem, which I am assuming was a book from 1707 by George Farquhar. Is that how you say his name? Far for Farquhar. Far far. Oh, that reminds me of a. Farrarrarrar. You you know if you know that you you know it's up. Uh, so I guess that's the name of the character who was the innkeeper in the Bose Stratagem. I don't know if I'm saying Bose correctly. It is spelled B-E-A-U-X apostrophe. So uh, the Bauxes, Bauxes. Moving on to Bonito or Bonita. B-O-N-I-T-O, noun from 1565. Any of several... Scrombroid, scombroid fishes. I think the book is making these words up. Any of several scombroid fishes intermediate between the smaller mackerels and the larger tunas. Scombroid is S C O M B R O I D. Uh, they, especially the genera Sarda and Euthinus. Euthinus. This is a Spanish word from bonito, which means pretty, uh, which is a diminutive of the word bueno, which means good. And then from the Latin word bonus, B-O-N-U-S. Next is bonk, B-O-N-K. It is a transitive verb from 17, no, 1931. And we have the synonym hit, as in bonked him over the head. I have a memory of there was like a, a Sega Genesis game with the character like Bonk or Bonker or something like that. I have this visual in my head. Maybe I can uh, find an image of that. Um, next, we have Bonkers, adjective from uh, circa 1948. Synonyms are crazy and mad, as in fans went bonkers when their team won. Well, yes, of course they did. Uh, this is perhaps from bonk plus the suffix ers, as in crackers. And um, in the podcast, How Did This Get Made, they say bonkers a lot because they talk about movies that are, quite frankly, bonkers. Next is bon mot. B-O-N, second word, M-O-T, bon mot. Noun from... Um, it, uh, circa 1730. It is a French word. I was skipping ahead because there were some uh, other ways that you could make it plural. Bons mots? Uh, bon mots? Yes. It is a clever remark. Synonym is witticism. Uh, and then this French word literally means good word. Ah, that was a very clever remark. A bon mot. Next is bon B-O-N-N-E, noun from 1771, a French nursemaid or maidservant. Uh, this is French. It is the feminine of the word bon, B-O-N. But is that the one that means good or is that a different one? I don't know. Next is bonnet, first form noun from the 14th century. 1A1, 
chiefly Scottish, a man's or boy's cap. 1A2, a brimless Scottish cap of seamless woolen fabric. Compare to the number two definition for the word, get ready, tam shanter That is tam hyphen o with an apostrophe hyphen shanter s-h-a-n-t-e-r 1b a cloth or straw hat tied under the chin and worn by women and children 2a is british an automobile hood they say the bonnet 2b a metal covering or cowl as for a fireplace valve chamber or ventilator so this is from middle english bonnet with one n it is an auxiliary sail or a kind of cap from anglo-french probably of germanic origin akin to the os what is os old spencer old sa 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 old saxon old saxon uh gibund which means bundle from Old English, bindan, which means to bind. Now we have the second form of bonnet. It is a transitive verb from 1858, to provide with or dress in a bonnet. Next is bonny, B-O-N-N-Y, or I-E, adjective from the 15th century. It is chiefly British, and the synonyms are attractive and fair. Also, the synonyms fine and excellent. Bonnily is an adverb. Uh, let's see, this is from Middle English, Scottish, bonny with one N, perhaps ultimately from the Anglo-French bon, which means good, and from the Latin bonus, which, uh, and there's more at the word bounty. Next is bonny clabber. Bonny, and then we added C-L-A-B-B-E-R, all one word, noun from 1605, it is northern and midland, and then we just have the synonym clabber. Don't know what that is, but it is in, um, it's Irish, uh, ban clabber, B-A-I-N-N-E-C-L-A-B-A-I-R. I know that I am mispronouncing that because Irish Gaelic doesn't sound like it's spelled, at least to my brain. Uh, so this is from ban, which means milk, and clabber which is from clabar, which is a sour, thick milk. So it's milk, milk, both? Interesting. Uh, Next, we have bonobo or bonobo. Bonobo, 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 or bonobo. How many times can I say bonobo? Wob, won, wob. That's it backwards. Wob, no, wob. Noun from 1954. A rare anthropoid ape that has a more slender build and longer limbs than the related common chimpanzee and that inhabits a small geographic region in equatorial Africa south of the Congo River, called also pygmy chimpanzee. Didn't know that. Uh, Let's see. The... This rare anthropoid ape... I didn't know it was rare. uh, The scientific name is Pan Paniscus. And it looks like the common chimpanzee scientific name is Pan Troglodytes. And that is that for that one. The origin of this word, by the way, is unknown, which I think is interesting. Next is bonsai, B-O-N-S-A-I. It is a noun from 1900. That's much more recent than I would have expected, although maybe that's just when it came into English. It is a potted plant, as a tree, dwarfed, um, as by pruning, dwarfed and trained to an artistic shape, also the art of growing such a plant. Let's see, this is a Japanese word, and it literally means tray planting. So it's like planting in a tray, maybe? Um, There is a picture of a bonsai tree here. Um, If you didn't know, they just look like normal-sized trees, at least in this picture, Um, but we know that that is not the case. There is, in the Chicago Botanic Gardens, I don't know if it's a permanent exhibit, but I did see that they had a very cool exhibit of bonsai trees. Um, They're they're just truly stunning to see what what people make. Uh, They are small, but 
detailed and intricate and beautiful to look at and they come in all these different shapes and sizes and very very cool trees now we have bonspiel b-o-n-s-p-i-e-l noun from circa 1772 a match or tournament between curling clubs they call it a bonspiel this is perhaps from the dutch bond which means league and spiel or spell, which means game. It is a game league. And the last word for this episode is bantan. B-O-N, next word, T-O-N, bantan. Noun from 1747, 1A, fashionable manner or style. 1B, the fashionable or proper thing. And then number two, high society. This is French, literally means good tone. So we had boniato, boniface, or boniface, bonito, bonk, bonkers, bon mot, or bon mot, uh, bon, bonnet, bonnie, bonnie clabber, bonobo, bonsai, bonspiel, bonton. Well, this is unfortunate because some of these, if they were uh, in different episodes, I probably would pick them as the word of the episode. But let's see if we can do... So. I'm going to pick bonkers as the word of the episode because I can't necessarily post a picture of that on Instagram like I can with Bonobo and Bonsai. Um, but uh, I like this word very much. I use it often. That is the end of the episode. Thank you very much for listening. I hope that you are rating and reviewing on whatever platform you are on, if they so allow it, especially Apple. Please, please, and thank you. And share, share, share. And if you want to give me a buck a month or something, you can become a patron and uh, you can get these episodes early. I do actually get these out on there like a, a good week or two early. So that's cool, right? All right. This is it. Uh, this has been Spencer Dispensing Information. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to this episode of the Dictionary Podcast. It's just called the Dictionary. It's not called the Dictionary Podcast. We are in the last quarter of page 141. Uh, the end of the episode is um, its going to get fun for those of you who like to have your head in the gutter. So you can look forward to that. But it's not all gutter-related things. It just sort of sounds like it is. The first word is bonus, B-O-N-U-S. When my wife and I visited Iceland, we saw that they had a grocery store called Bonus. Um, I don't know what it means in Icelandic, but, you know, in, uh, it's it's from the French word bon, which means good. So, you know, it's a bonus. is It's always a good thing. So maybe that's what that is in Icelandic. Maybe it's similar. Okay, this is a noun from 1773. Something in addition to what is expected or strictly due as A, money or an equivalent given in addition to an employee's usual compensation. Who doesn't love a good bonus? B, a premium as of stock given by a corporation to a purchaser of its securities to a promoter or to an employee. C, a government payment to war veterans. D, a sum in excess of salary given an athlete for signing with a team. And this is Latin. It literally means good. So yeah. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Latin, it bonus means good. French, bon means good, which is from the Latin bonus. And then it says there's more at the word bounty. Now we have the word bon vivant. I think I'm spelling or pronouncing that correctly. You could say bon vivant, bon vivant. B-O-N, second word, V-I-V-A-N-T. I'm gonna guessing this is French. Yes, it is French. And uh, I'm assuming that that first word means good. And we will find out later what that second word means. So this is a noun from circa 1695. A person having cultivated, refined, and sociable tastes, especially with respect to food and drink. So... It, the phrase means, uh, it means good liver. Um, I'm, you know, when I first saw that, I thought that your liver was good and healthy, but I'm pretty sure it just means like one who lives. We are living, and if you, you have, uh, 
uh, cultivated, refined, and sociable tastes, uh, especially with food and drink, you are living well. You are a good liver. But it also is the is the the name of an organ inside your body. Now we have the word bon voyage. It is a noun from the 15th century. The synonym is farewell, and it is often used interjectionally. So this is French again, and it literally means good journey. Next, we have bony, B-O-N-Y or B-O-N-E-Y adjective from the 14th century. 1A, consisting of bone. Uh, 1B, resembling bone. 2A, full of bones, as in a bony piece of fish. 2B, having prominent bones, as in a rugged bony face. 3A, Synonyms are skinny and scrawny. 3B, synonyms are barren and lean. Next is bony fish. I feel like, did we have this one before? We had bone, oh, we had bone fish. This is bony fish, two words, noun from 1691. Any of a major taxon comprising fishes as sturgeons, eels, mackerels, and sunfish with a bony rather than a cartilaginous skeleton, called also uh, teleost, T-E-L-E-O-S-T, teleost. And then it says compared to cartilaginous fish or jawless fish. The class name for this major taxon is ostichetes, ostichetes, why do I put myself through this? I don't have to say these words, but I choose to say them. Um, O-S-T-E-I-C-H-T-H-Y-E-S. Ostichthes. Or the superclass, teleostomy. Next, we have bonds. B-O-N-Z-E. Noun from 1653. A Buddhist monk is called a bonds. This is French from I think that's Portuguese, bonzo, which is from the Japanese bonso, B-O-N-S-O, with a horizontal line over the O. Next is bu, B-O-O, first form. It is an interjection from the 15th century, used to express contempt or disapproval or to startle or frighten. Bu. Uh, my parents have a friend, that, oh, they've been friends, I think, since high school or something, um, and her nickname is just Boo. For some reason, they just picked that as her nickname. So that's what everybody knows her as, Boo. Um, and it's funny because then my sister, who also has a friend from high school, and somehow her nickname became Boo. I don't know if she's still called Boo, but I, that was just funny that two generations of people uh, happened to have friends whose nicknames were Boo. All right, now we have the second form of Boo, It is a noun from 1801. One, a shout of disapproval or contempt. Two, any utterance at all, usually used in negative constructions, as in, never said boo. Here's the third form of boo. It is a verb from 1884. Uh, Intransitive is first. To deride, especially by uttering a prolonged boo. Transitive says... To express disapproval of by booing. The crowd, as in, the crowd booed the referee. Uh, These days, this might be too new for this dictionary, but, uh, you know, a lot of people call their friends or somebody that they are, uh, that they love or whatever, they call them their boo. So that's another definition. All right, next is the word boob, B-O-O-B. It is the first form noun from 1907. And yes, there are multiple definitions and forms. So number one, a stupid, awkward person. Synonym is simpleton. Number two, synonyms are boor, B-O-O-R, and philistine. Boobish is an adjective. It says this is short for uh, the first form of the word booby, which, um, that is the last word of this episode, so we will get there shortly. But now we have the second form of boob. It is a noun from 1934. It is British, and the synonyms are mistake and blunder. And the etymology says that it's from the third form of boob, which I shall read to you now. 
It is an intransitive verb from 1935. It is British, and we have the number two definition for the word goof. And the etymology of this one actually comes from the first form of boob. There's a lot of weird mixing going on in here. All right, now we have the fourth form of boob. It is a noun from circa 1931. It is sometimes vulgar, and the synonym is the word breast. And this etymology is says it's short for the second form of booby, which will be at the beginning of the next episode. Yes, I am confirming that. And uh, that is it for that. Next is boo bird, B-O-O, and then the word bird, one word, noun from 1975. The bird is the word. A home fan at a sporting event who boos one or more members of the home team. Well, why would you do that? You're, you're just being a boo bird. Next is, I think I, let's see, booboisee. Booboisee, I think that's how you say it. It is a noun from 1922. The general public regarded as consisting of boobs. I think they mean uh, a stupid, awkward person, a simpleton, a boor, a philistine. Uh, this is from the blend of the word boob, and yes, it does say the first form of boob, um, and the word bourgeoisie. So it's bourgeoisie. Can't believe this is in the dictionary. Now we have the word boo-boo. Boo twice with a hyphen. Noun from uh, 1953. One, a usually trivial injury as a bruise or scratch. And that is used especially by or of a child. I got a boo-boo. Number two, synonyms are mistake and blunder. So this is probably baby talk, alternative of boo-hoo, which is an imitation of the sound of weeping. So when a baby gets boo-hoo, uh, no, a boo-boo, they go boo-hoo. I guess. That seems odd, but maybe. Okay, next is boob-tube. Boob, second word, tube. Noun from 1966. And we have the synonym television. I'm curious where this came from. It's probably from that first form of boob. Maybe they thought the television was making everybody into a stupid, awkward person. And that's what they called it. And then our last word for this episode is the first form of booby. B-O-O-B-Y. It is a noun from 1602. One an awkward, foolish person. Synonym is dope. Number two, any of several tropical seabirds of the gannet family. And then the genus for that is Sula, S-U-L-A. Yeah, I think there's uh, blue-footed boobies, pretty sure. I don't think we read that in the dictionary, but maybe I'll post a picture of that. This is a modified version of the Spanish word bobo, which is from Latin balbus or balbus, which is uh, which means stammering, and that is good for that. So we had bonus, bon vivant, bon voyage, bony, bony fish, bonds, boo, boob, boo bird, booboisie, boo boo, boob tube, and booby. Uh, let's see. Um, what should I pick? I think I am going to pick. Um, I don't know, boo bird as the word of the episode, because, um, why are you gonna, why are you, you, uh, why are you gonna be a home fan booing your home team? You know, be respectful of your people that you are a fan of. That is it for this episode. Thank you very much for listening and tuning in to this station. Next day, tomorrow, same bat time, same bat channel. This has been Spencer Dispensing Information. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to this episode of The Dictionary. Thank you, thank you, thank you for putting this podcast on. Uh, the first word in this episode is booby. I hope you listened to yesterday's episode. Uh, we talked about boobs and boobies. Uh, this is the second form. It is spelled B-O-O-B-Y. It is a noun from 1916. It is sometimes vulgar, and it means breast. So this says it is an alternative of bubby, B-U-B-B-Y. It'll be a little while before we get to that. Um, so we'll, we'll see what that one says when we get there. Next, we have booby hatch. 
with an H. H A T C H. Uh, two words, noun from 1840. One, a raised framework with a sliding cover over a small hatch on a ship. Number two, a psychiatric hospital. I didn't realize they called that the booby hatch. Uh, I wonder why. Um, I mean, I'm familiar with the word hatch, but in terms of a ship, why did they call it a booby hatch? Um, yeah, and the, the similar to one that's coming up in a couple words. But the next word is booby prize, two words, noun from 1889. One, an award for the poorest performance in a game or competition. Number two, an acknowledgement of notable inferiority. So that one seems like it's related to, um, what, that first first form of boob, stupid awkward person. Um, and maybe booby hatch also is related to that uh, Maybe if you fall into this small hatch on a ship, you would be considered a booby. So they called it the booby hatch. Next is booby trap. Probably similar etymology. Noun from 1850. One, a trap for the unwary or unsuspecting. Synonym is pitfall. Number two, a concealed explosive device contrived to go off when some harmless looking object is touched. Booby trap is also a transitive verb. Of course, I always think of the movie Goonies when I hear of booby trap. Um, Yeah, so I guess if you get caught by a booby trap, you would be a boob. Next is boodle, or maybe it's boodle, B-O-O-D-L-E, noun from 1833. One, a collection or lot of persons. Uh, Synonym is caboodle, the whole kit and caboodle. 2A, bribe money. They call that the boodle. 2B, a large amount, especially of money. This is from, I think it's Dutch, bodel, or bodel, B-O-E-D-E-L. It means a state or a lot, and that's good for that. Next, we have booger, B-O-O-G-E-R, noun from uh, 1866. Number one, we have the synonym bogeyman or boogeyman, the one with uh, a single O. And then number two, oh, this is great, a piece of dried nasal mucus. It's not always dry. Uh, let's see, this is an alternative of the English dialect buggard or bogart, which is from bug plus the suffix ard. Uh, that's not really helpful, but uh, thank you for that. Now we have Boogeyman. This one has two O's. It is, oh, again, it says also Boogerman, which is so interesting. Okay, noun from circa 1850, and we have the synonym Boogeyman. Go back a number of episodes to listen to all of that. Next is Boogie, uh, B-O-O-G-I-E. It is the first form, noun from 1929. One synonym is Boogie Woogie. Two Earthy and strongly rhythmic rock music conducive to dancing. Also, a period of or occasion for dancing to this music. Now we have the second form of boogie. It is a verb from, wow, so many different forms. Boogie, spelled two other ways. Boogied, boogied, spelled two ways. Boogieen, boogieen, spelled two different ways. It is a verb from 1930. Uh, looks like it's just intransitive. Number one, to dance to rock music. Also, synonyms, revel and party. 2A, to move quickly. 2B, to get going. Yes, boogie. Uh, Weird Al has a song called Got a Boogie, and it is a play on uh, boogie, as in dancing a lot, and also boogie, which is another form of the word booger, and uh, maybe I'll put in a clip here. I got a boogie. Got a boogie. I got a boogie. Got a boogie on my finger and I can't shake it off. Next word is boogie woogie. Two words with a hyphen. Uh, noun from 1928. A percussive style of playing blues on the piano characterized by a steady rhythmic ground bass of eighth notes in quadruple time and a series of improvised melodic variations. 
Next is, I think it's pronounced Bujum or Bujum, B-O-O-J-U-M. It is a noun from 1951. A tall, spiny, long-lived desert tree uh, native to northwestern Mexico and related to the Ocotillo, O-C-O-T-I-L-L-O. So this is perhaps from Bujum, an imaginary creature in the book. Is it a book? Yes, I think it's a book or a story or something. The Hunting of the Snark. And that is by Lewis Carroll, who uh, wrote Alice in Wonderland. Uh, Let's see. And it is from its grotesque appearance. That's what that is. The desert tree scientific name is Fuqueria columnaris. And then also Idria columnaris. Bujum. Maybe I'll find a picture of a bujum. And then our last word for this episode is book. B-O-O-K. This is, uh, got, it's got a lot of definitions. It's a very important word because for one, I am holding a book in my lap and I'm reading it to you and books are very important and they've been around for a while and you need to respect your books and go get books from the library. Uh, I'm telling that to myself as well. Uh, you know, physical things are not being used as much these days, especially books. Uh, and there's always, there's something great about a book. Um, Also, They Might Be Giant's new album is going to be called Book. I'm very excited, and I'm curious. Okay, Uh, this is a noun from before the 12th century. 1A, a set of written sheets of skin or paper or tablets of wood or ivory. 1B, a set of written, printed, or blank sheets bound together into a volume. 1C, a long written or printed literary composition. 1D, a major division of a treatise or treatise or literary work. 1E, a record of a business's financial transactions or financial condition, often used in plural, as in, the books show a profit. 1F, we have the 4A definition for the word magazine. 1G, we have the synonym ebook. Number two is capitalized. We have the number one definition for the word Bible. Number three, something that yields knowledge or understanding, as in the great book of nature. Also as in, her face was an open book. 4A1, the total available knowledge and experience that can be brought to bear on a task or problem, as in, tried every trick in the book. 4A2, Inside inside information or analysis, as in, the book on him is that he can't hit a curveball. Is that the book on me? 4B, the standards or authority relevant in a situation, as in, run by the book. 5A, all the charges that can be made against an accused person, as in, threw the book at him. 5B, A position from which one must answer for certain acts. Synonym is account, as in, bring criminals to book. 6A, synonym is libretto. 6B, the script of a play. 6C, a book of arrangements for a musician or dance orchestra. And then it says musical repertory. Number seven, a pack of items bound together like a book as in, a book of stamps, also as in, a book of matches. 8a, synonym is bookmaker. 8b, the bets registered by a bookmaker, also, the business or activity of giving odds and taking bets. Number 9, the number of tricks a card player or side must win before any trick can have scoring value. Bookful is a noun, in one's book, means in one's own opinion. In one's good books means in favor with one. One for the book means an act or occurrence worth noting. And then finally, on the books means on the records. We had booby, booby hatch, booby prize, booby trap, boodle, booger, boogeyman, boogie, boogie woogie, boojum, and book. Well, I think I have to pick book as the word of the episode because books are books and books are great. 
that is it for this episode. I'm going to record one more in this recording session. This has been Spencer Dispensing Information. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to this episode of The Dictionary. Uh, This is my eighth episode recorded today. I did take a break. I had some tea, some hot, hot tea uh, to hopefully, you know, uh, make make my vocal cords back to normal. Uh, I don't know how well it worked. Um, but here I am. I, I'm, this is the end of the second recording session of four episodes because uh, I didn't get to record yesterday. Uh, so let us get to them. And then I'm going to eat some food because I'm hungry. All right. The first word is the second form of book. It is an adjective from the 13th century. One, derived from books and not from practical experience, as in book learning. Number two, itch in my nose. Number two, shown by books of account, as in book assets. Now we have the third form. It is a verb from 1807, starting with transitive, 1A, to register as a name for some future activity or condition, as to engage transportation or reserve lodgings, as in, he was booked to sail on Monday. 1B, to schedule engagements for, as in, book the band for a week. Uh, 1C, to set aside time for. 1D, to reserve in advance, as in, book two seats at the theater. Also as in, we're all booked up. 2A, to enter charges against in a police register. To be, this is of a referee, to note the name or number of, as a soccer player, for a serious infraction of the rules. Now we have intransitive, one, to make a reservation, as in book through your travel agent. Number two, chiefly British, to register in a hotel, usually used with the word in. Number three is slang, Synonyms are leave and go, especially to depart quickly. Oh, we got to book it. Bookable is an adjective. And uh, this next one, I think, is chiefly British, or the previous one is chiefly British. Uh, Booker is a noun. Now we have book binding, one word noun from 1707. One, the art or trade of binding books. Two, the binding of a book. Book binder is a noun, and book bindery is also a noun. Now we have bookcase, noun from 1726, a piece of furniture consisting of shelves to hold books. Maybe someday I'll have more of a bookcase. Next is book club, two words, noun from 1905, one, an organization that ships selected books to members usually on a regular schedule and often at discount prices. Two, a group of persons who meet regularly to discuss books they are reading. Next is bookend, one word, noun from 1907, a support placed at the end of a row of books. Next is bookie, book with an IE, noun from 1885, and we have the number two definition for the word bookmaker. And that is from shortening and alternating. Yeah. Okay. Next is booking. Noun from 1823. One, the act of one that books. Two, an engagement or scheduled performance. And number three, we have the 1C definition for the word reservation. Next is booking office. Two words. Noun from circa 1837. It is chiefly British, and it means a ticket office, especially one in a railroad station. Next is bookish, adjective from 1566, 1A, of or relating to books. 1B, fond of books and reading. 2A, inclined to rely on book knowledge. 2B, is talking about words, it says says, of words, literary and formal, as opposed to colloquial and informal. Uh, Next is 2C, given to literary or scholarly pursuits, also affected, learned, affectedly learned. Bookishly is an adverb, and bookishness is a noun. I think a lot of people use this 
uh, sort of as a derogatory term to describe people. Oh, you're so bookish. But I think that those people uh, would take that as a compliment, actually. I, I think they should, actually. Next is bookkeeper. One word, noun from 1555. A person who records the accounts or transactions of a business. Bookkeeping is a noun. Next is booklet. Booklet. Noun from 1856, a little book, especially the synonym pamphlet. Next is book louse, two words, noun from 1867, any of various tiny, usually wingless insects uh, that feed in feed on organic matter as paper and usually inhabit damp areas. The order name is Socoptera which is spelled with a P, P-S-O-C-O-P-T-E-R-A, Socoptera, and the genus uh, Liposcelis. Next is book lung, two words. Noun from 1897, a saccular breathing organ in many arachnids containing thin folds of membrane arranged like the leaves of a book. Interesting. Next is bookmaker, Noun from 1515. One, a printer, binder, or designer of books. Two, a person who determines odds and receives and pays off bets. Bookmaking is a noun. Next is bookman. One word, noun from 1583. One, a person who has a love of books and especially of reading. Two, a person who is involved in the writing, publishing, or selling of books. And finally, we have bookmark. It is the first form. We're only going to do the first form in this episode. It is uh, spelled B-O-O-K-M-A-R-K. Noun from 1838. Uh, So number one says it could also be bookmarker. And the definition says a marker or finding a place in a book. I use a paperclip as my bookmark in this dictionary. Number two, a menu entry or icon on a computer that is usually created by the user and that serves as a shortcut to a previously viewed location as an internet site. I have a lot of bookmarks as well. Maybe not as much as some, but maybe more than others, and I use them regularly. Um, Okay, we had book book binding, bookcase, book club, book end, bookie, booking, booking office, bookish, bookkeeper, booklet, book louse, book lung, book maker, book man, and bookmark as the, those were all the words. Uh, I'm going to pick book lung as the word of the episode because I want to see a picture of this secular breathing organ in many arachnids. Sounds pretty interesting. That is it. I'm going to stop talking for the rest of the day because my voice needs a rest. Oh, this was kind of a short episode. This has been Spencer Dispensing Information. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to the dictionary. I think I have to turn my volume down a little bit. How about that? Does that work for you? Great. All right. The first word is bookmark. Uh, It is the second form. Transitive verb from 1985. 1985. Okay. To create a computer bookmark for. Ah, see, that's what we're talking about. Uh, As in, bookmark a website. Next is, and I still feel like I'm a little bit too loud. Okay, next is book match. Two words with a hyphen. Transitive verb from 1942. To match the grains of, as two sheets of, uh, as two sheets of veneer, so that one sheet seems to be the mirror image of the other. Okay. Next is bookmobile, one word, noun from 1926, a truck that serves as a traveling library. These are great because, uh, you know, they can get books to people who don't have a library near them, Uh, and reading is good. It's better than good. It's great. Do you remember those posters that they would have up in your library, school library, the local library? They had all these uh, celebrities, uh, you know, holding up a book and saying, like, you know, you got to read. It's true. I really don't read that much. I, m- a lot of my time is filled up or my free time is filled up with actually listening to podcasts. 
Um, so whenever I do read something, it's usually in uh, audiobook form, but even that is very, very rare. Also, I don't know what's with my brain, but I kind of fall asleep when I read. Maybe I should uh, get a book when I go to bed and just read like a page and then I'll be knocked out. Next is Book of Common Prayer. Four words. The first letters are capitalized except for the word of. This is from 1549, the service book of the Anglican Communion. Next is Book Off. Two words. It is an intransitive verb from 1971. It is chiefly Canadian. To notify an employer that one is not reporting for work as because of sickness. So they say book off. We would probably here in America, we say uh, call off or um, what, 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 I'm, my mind is a, a blank. Uh, call in sick. I mean, that's a that's a common phrase. All right. Next is book plate. One word. It's the, a plate that you put your book on. Noun from 1791. A book owner's identification label that is usually pasted on the inside front cover of a book. Next is bookseller, one word, noun from the 15th century, one that sells books, especially the proprietor of a bookstore. Book selling is a noun. Uh, much respect to all of you booksellers, You're getting the books out to the people. Next is bookshelf. Noun from 1623, an open shelf for holding books. I mean, it could also be a closed shelf because, oh no, I guess they mean open, it's open in the front. Doesn't mean that it doesn't have books on it. Next is bookshop. Noun from 1765, and we have the synonym bookstore. Next is bookstall, one word, that's S-T-A-L-L. Noun from 1800, one, a stall where books are sold. Number two is chiefly British, and the synonym is newsstand. Yeah, here in America, we say newsstand, not so much bookstall. In fact, I've never heard that before. Here we go with a bookstore noun from 1760, a place of business where books are the main item offered for sale, called also bookshop. Uh, it is unfortunate that uh, a lot of these places are going under, um, not even just because of the uh, quarantine that we're living through right now, but just in general, uh, you know, the world has gone digital, either buying books uh, digitally in digital format or buying them on the web and then you have them shipped to you. Uh, and so there's not as much of a need for a bookstore, but there is definitely something special about going to a bookstore Next is book value. Two words, noun from 1899. The value of something as shown on bookkeeping records as distinguished from market value. A, the value of an asset equal to cost minus depreciation. B, the value of a corporation's stock equal to its book value minus its liabilities. Next is bookworm. One word, noun from 1592. A person unusually devoted to reading and study. Is it that unusual, though? I don't know. All right, next is Boolean. Capital B-O-O-L-E-A-N. Adjective from, uh, well, it doesn't have a year. No, 1851. Of relating to or being a logical combinatorial system as Boolean algebra, that represents symbolically relationships that represents symbolically relationships between entities uh sorry th there's so many things in parentheses that that was a very difficult sentence to read so let's try again just skipping the parentheses altogether okay of relating to or being a logical combinatorial system that represents symbolically relationships between entities. Doesn't sound like it's a correct sentence, but that is how it is written here. So, the logical, uh, or an example is the Boolean algebra, and then the uh, symbolically relationships. I still don't understand that phrase. There's an example, um, as those implied by the logical operators using the words and, or, and the word not. And, or, not. 
And then after between entities, it says as sets, propositions, or on-off computer circuit elements. Great. Now we have two examples, Boolean expression and Boolean search strategy for information retrieval. I feel like this is not nearly as complicated as they're making it sound, but there you have it. This is from George Boole, B-O-O-L-E. He died in 1864. He was an English mathematician. All right, next we have Boolean algebra. It was mentioned in the last one. Noun from circa 1889. An algebraic system that consists of a set closed under two binary operations and that can be described by any of various systems of postulates, all of which can be deduced from its distributive over the other, that an ent- identity element exists for each operation, and that for every element in the set there exists another element, which, when combined with the first under either one of the operations, yields the identity element of the other operation. There you have that. That is one sentence. The problem I have with these really long ones is that there's no there's no commas. There's nothing like that. So I sort of have to figure out, actually, there is a comma right there. But in places where you think there would be a comma, there isn't a comma. And I don't understand that. Maybe they're trying to save ink. Actually, there's another comma there. But yeah, I would have put commas in more places. But maybe that's just me. I think I tend to overuse commas. All right, moving on to the last word for this episode. It is the word boom, B-O-O-M. It is the first form. Uh, The second and third forms will be in the next episode. This is a verb from the 15th century. Intransitive is first. One, to make a deep, hollow sound. Boom. 2A, to increase in, in importance, popularity, or esteem. 2B, to experience a sudden rapid growth and expansion, usually with an increase in prices, as in business was booming. 2C, to develop rapidly in population and importance, as in, California boomed when gold was discovered there. 2D, to increase greatly in size or number, as in, the population boomed. Now we've got transitive, one, to cause to resound, often used with the word out, as in, his voice booms out the lyrics. 2, to cause a rapid growth or increase of, synonym is boost. And 3, To hit or kick forcefully, as in, boom, a punt. So we had bookmark, bookmatch, bookmobile, book of common prayer, book off, book plate, bookseller, bookshelf, bookshop, bookstall, bookstore, book value, bookworm, boolean, boolean algebra, and boom. I am going to pick bookworm as the word of the episode. I think in, uh, was it one of the... Uh, Toy Story movies, I think there was a character that was a bookworm. Might have been number three. Anyway, uh, yeah, bookworms, you people who love books, uh, we need more of you in the world. I'm trying to be more of a book person. That is it for this episode. Thank you very much for joining me. Uh, Please go rate and review. Send me an email if you want. You can uh, join the Patreon. Uh, You can be a patron. Uh, episodes go up early and I do have plans to record some, uh, some exclusives. So go check that out. This has been Spencer Dispensing Information. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to the dictionary. I hope you are all doing well. Today, I think is August 22nd. Uh, schools are, should be in session in most of the places, but whether or not they're, uh, physically in session or, in E session, I don't know, uh, personally, I don't think anybody should be in schools right now. Uh, and the, the news for the last few days, uh, from when I'm recording this has been that I think a school in Georgia started and some photos, uh, were posted of a whole bunch of students, uh, mostly maskless, uh, and that's a problem. So, uh, yeah, wear your mask and don't be by people. All right, the first word is boom, B-O-O-M, second form, noun, from the 15th century. 
One, a booming sound or cry, often used interjectionally to indicate suddenness, as in, as in, then boom, he was fired. Two, a rapid expansion or increase, as to a, a general movement in support of a candidate for office. Two, B, rapid settlement and development of a town or district. Two, C, a rapid widespread expansion of economic activity. 2D, an upsurge in activity, interest, or popularity, as in a folk music boom. Now we have the third form of boom. It is a noun from 1627. One, a long spar used to extend the foot of a sail. 2A, a chain or line of connected floating timbers extended across a river, lake, or harbor as to obstruct passage or catch floating objects. 2b, a temporary floating barrier used to contain an oil spill. 3a, a long beam projecting from the mast of a derrick, D-E-R-R-I-C-K, to support or guide cargo. 3b, a long, more or less horizontal supporting arm or brace, as for holding a microphone. I currently, I guess my arm is the boom right now because I'm holding it with my hand. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, filmmaking and stuff. You need a boom operator or some pole to hold the mic. Number four, a spar or outrigger connecting the tail surfaces and the main supporting structure of an aircraft. So this is looks like Dutch, a Dutch word that means tree or beam, akin to the old high German boom, B-O-U-M, which means tree. And there is more at the word beam. Next is boombox. Two words, noun from 1981. A usually large portable stereophonic radio and tape or CD player. If you want to see a good example of somebody carrying around a boombox, go watch uh, the Spike Lee movie, Why Am I Blanking on What It Is Called? Um, Oh boy, I feel like such an idiot. There's been a lot of talk about it recently. Um... Oh, it's called, I am literally looking it up right now because, oh, do the right thing. I knew there was a D in there. All right, next is Boomer, noun from 1880. One, one that booms. Two, one that joins a rush of settlers to a boom area. Three, a transient worker as a bridge builder. Four, a person born during a baby boom as in Baby Boomer. I can't remember if I mentioned this when we got to Baby Boomer, but recently we've, we've been hearing a lot of the phrase uh, the, or the word Boomer tagged on to things um, because the Boomers are all elderly or mostly elderly now. And, uh, you know, maybe they don't follow technology as well as, as, you know, some of these younger millennial people or whoever. And, You know, they they get made fun of. But, you know, we need to respect our elders, I think. All right, next we have boomerang. Noun from 1825. One, a bent or angular throwing club. I love that. It's a throwing club. Uh, Typically flat on one side and rounded on the other so that it soars or curves in flight, especially one designed to return near the thrower. Number two, an act or utterance that backfires on its originator. Boomerang is also an intransitive verb. This is a Daruk word, which is spelled D-H-A-R-U-K. That is an Australian Aboriginal language of the Port Jackson area. Um, So I guess their word, the Dur... dur, uh, Now I don't even know how to say it. Daruk word is Boomerin, B U. M A R I N, and then it looks like there's a little. It looks like a there's a Y at the end, but it's superscript. It's like up higher where you'd you'd see like a number or something. Um, so that must be the way that we uh, write it out in English for whatever weird pronunciation that would be. It's not weird. It's just weird to us. Um, so I, I'm curious to know how they pronounce that word. Um, so yeah, boomerangs, boomerangs are awesome. I got a boomerang from somebody or somebody made me one. Um, I've also had, when I was a kid, I've had some of those like, uh, 
you know, modern toy companies make things that are kind of like boomerangs that will come back to you. Um, I can't remember the name of the company, but they had one that was like a triangle and mine was like neon sort of green, yellow. Um, they are really, really, really hard to use accurately. Um, I've had a few of them and I know at least two of them either got stuck up in a tree or uh, landed on the roof of a very tall building uh, th because there was a park. I lived like a block and a half away from my middle school and they had a big park there. And so that's where my dad and I would go to try this boomerang. Uh, and we got it to sort of work a couple of times. But yeah, there was a, a big tree on one end and one of them got stuck up there. I mean, it was way up there, like 50 feet at least. Uh, and then on the other side of the park was the school and I guess we were just too close to the school and it just went way up there. I mean, it was like a, must have been a four story building. Uh, and it went up on the roof and I was like, well, there goes that. But uh, boomerangs are really, really cool when you can do it right. Okay, enough of that. Oh, wait, not really, because our next word is boomerang child. What's this? It's two words, noun from 1988. A young adult who returns to live at his or her family home especially for financial reasons. I never knew that was called a boomerang child. Next is booming, adjective from 1682. One, making a loud, deep sound, as in his booming voice. That's not something that I have. Two, forcefully or powerfully executed, as in hit a booming serve. Next is boomlet, noun from 1880. A small boom, Specifically, a sudden increase in business activity, as in a stock market boomlet. Next is Boomtown, noun from 1896, a town enjoying a business and population boom. Uh, this, I think, is a good place for me to uh, give a shout out to a podcast that I w very much liked, but um, they they have stopped making it. Um, I think people just got busy, but I really hope that it comes back. Um, it is a very, very silly podcast called Boom Time with Falula Borg. He is the main host. I'm sure I've mentioned him before. Um, and then his uh, producer, co-host, um, Alex, I think his name is Alex Simmons. Um, yeah, he wasn't on the beginning, but then eventually they, they did it together. Uh, they, they did the co-hosting together. Uh, so yeah, you can still find it. I'm sure it, it's out there and, uh, it's, it's a, it's a funny, goofy podcast. Next is boomy, boom with a Y adjective from 1888, one of relating to or characterized by an economic boom Two having an excessive accentuation on the tones of lower pitch in reproduced sounds. Next is Boon, B-O-O-N, first form, noun from the 12th century. Number one, synonyms are benefit and favor, especially one that is given in answer to a request. Two, a timely benefit, synonym is blessing. This is from Middle English, bone, which means prayer, request, or the favor requested, uh, let's see, from Old Norse, bon, which means request, akin to the Old English, ben, which means prayer. Also, banan, which means to summon, and there's more at the word ban, B-A-N. Now we've got the second form of boon. It is an adjective from the 14th century. Number one is archaic, and we have the synonym favorable. Number two, synonym is convivial, C -O -N -V -I -V -L. I-A-L, as in a boon companion. This is from Middle English, bon, from Anglo-French. That means good, and there is more at the word bounty. Next is boondocks. One word, noun, from 1930. One, rough country filled with dense brush. Two, a rural area. Synonym is sticks. This is a, what is tag? Tag, T-A-G. No, I went to the wrong page. Um, T-A, uh, Tagalog. Is that a language? Tagalog? Uh, this is a Tagalog word. Uh, boondock, B-U-N-D-O-K. And that means mountain. 
Where do they speak Tagalog? All right, next we have boondoggle, one word, noun from 1929. One, a braided cord worn by Boy Scouts as a neckerchief, slide, hat band, or ornament. Two, a wasteful or impractical project or activity often involving graft, G-R-A-F-T. Boondoggle is also an intransitive verb, and boondoggler is a noun. So this was coined by Robert H. Link, who died in 1957, and he was an American scoutmaster. Next we have boonies, B-O-O-N-I-E-S. It is a noun from 1956. It is slang, and we have the number two definition for the word boondocks, and that was a rural area, or sticks. And then our last word for this episode is boor, B-O-O-R, or is it just boor? Boor, 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 boor. Noun from 1551. Number one, synonym is peasant. And number two, a rude or insensitive person. This is Dutch, boor, B-O-E-R, akin to the Old English buon, which means to dwell, and there is more at the word bower, B-O-W-E-R, or bower, not sure. So that is all the words. I think I am going to pick boomerang as the word of the episode, but if you would like, I can just reread them to you again because I've sort of made that a habit. Boom, boombox, boomer, boomerang, boomerang child, booming, boomlet, boomtown, boomy, boon, boondocks, boondoggle, boonies, and boor. Thank you, thank you, thank you for listening, and uh, let, let the people know that you like this podcast, because if you do, you hold a special, special place in my heart. This has been Spencer Dispensing Information. Goodbye. Hello, all of you lovely word nerds. Thank you for turning on this podcast. Uh, yeah, they're every day. If you didn't know, if you are new, go back to the beginning and start from there. The quality is terrible. I'm terrible. Uh, but it does gradually get better. I promise. All right, the first word for this episode is boorish. B-O-O-R-I-S-H. Adjective from 1562. Resembling or befitting a boor, as in crude insensitivity. If you remember, the last word from the last episode was boor, uh, and it means peasant or a rude or insensitive person. Boorishly is an adverb, and... uh, Boorishness is a noun. Yes, that happens sometimes. I burp. We have synonym information for the word boorish. Boorish, churlish, C-H-U-R-L-I-S-H, churlish, loutish, L-O-U-T-I-S-H, and clownish mean uncouth in manners or appearance. Boorish implies rudeness of manner due to an due to insensitiveness insensitiveness to others' feelings and unwillingness to be agreeable, as in a drunk's boorish behavior. Churlish suggests surliness, unresponsiveness, and ungraciousness, as in churlish remarks. Loutish implies uh, bodily awkwardness together with stupidity, as in a loutish oaf. Clownish suggests ill-bred awkwardness, ignorance or stupidity, uh, ungainliness, and often a propensity for absurd antics, as in an adolescent's clownish conduct. All right, I think I, uh, I lean toward loutish. Next, we have the word boost, B-O-O-S-T, first form, verb from 1801. First are transitive, one, to push or shove up from below, two, Synonyms are increase and raise, as in plans to boost production. Also as in an extra holiday to boost morale. I don't know why, but the audio sounds different right now. Very weird. All right. Um, let's see. Number three, to promote the cause or or interests of. A synonym is plug, as in a campaign to boost the new fashions. Four, to raise the voltage of or across an electric circuit. That is an example of where you would raise the voltage of or across. And then number five, uh, it's slang. Synonyms are steel and shoplift. 
And then we have one intransitive definition. It is slang. And we have the synonym again, shoplift. And then another synonym for the whole thing is the word lift. Uh, the origin of this word is unknown, which again, I find fascinating, especially for a word like this. All right, next we have the second form of boost. It is a noun from 1801. One, a push upward. Two, an act that brings help or encouragement. Synonym is assist. Number three, an increase in amount. Next we have booster. Uh, noun from 1888. One that boosts as A, an enthusiastic supporter. B, an auxiliary device for increasing force, power, pressure, or effectiveness. C is slang. We have the synonym shoplifter. D, a radio frequency amplifier for a radio or television receiving set. E, the first stage of a multi-stage rocket providing thrust for the launching and the initial part of the flight. F, a substance that increases the effectiveness of a, a medicament, especially the synonym booster shot. So the really, the definition for this word is just one that boosts, and then there's six, one, two, three, four, yeah, six sort of more specific sub-definitions. Next is boosterism, noun from circa 1913, the activities and attitudes characteristic of boosters. Next is booster seat, two words, noun from 1973, a seat used to elevate a sitting child. Uh, now we have booster shot, noun from 1944, a supplementary dose of an immunizing agent, and that is the end of that sentence. It is called also booster or booster dose. Make sure you get your, your vaccines, your immunizations, all those things. Next we have the word boot, B-O-O-T. This one is our last word. We are going to do forms 1, 2, and 3 in this episode, and then forms 4 and 5 in the next one. So this first one is a noun from before the 12th century. One is archaic. Synonym is deliverance. Uh, they should change the name, or an, an alternate name of that movie deliverance could just be called boot. Number two, something to equalize a trade. Three is obsolete. Synonym is avail. To boot means uh, besides, or that's the synonym, besides. This is Middle English from Old English, bought, uh, which means remedy, and there's more at the word better. Next is the second form of boot. It is a verb from the 15th century. It is archaic, and we have the synonyms avail and profit. And then here we go with the very last one. It is the third form of boot. It is a noun from the 14th century. One, a fitted covering, as of leather or rubber, for the foot and usually reaching above the ankle. Two, an instrument of torture ooh, used to crush the leg and foot. That does not sound fun. Three, something that resembles or is likened to a boot, especially an enclosing or protective casing or sheath, as for a rifle or over an electrical or mechanical connection. Four, a Navy or Marine Corps recruit undergoing basic training. Five is British, an automobile trunk. Six A, a kick with the foot. Six B, summary dismissal, and that is used with the word the, as in gave him the boot. Uh, now we are on 6C, momentary pleasure or enjoyment. Synonym is bang, as in got a big boot out of the joke. I've never heard that used that way. 7, a sheath enclosing the inflorescence. And then number 8, the synonym is Denver boot. I wonder if we'll see that in the dictionary because I don't know what that is. Um, all right, that is it for the words. We had boorish, boost, Booster, boosterism, booster seat, booster shot, and boot. I am going to pick booster shot as the word of the episode because you should make sure that you are all vaccinated. Get your kids vaccinated. Um, I'm not getting into that political conversation. I'm just saying that 
the the pros outweigh the cons. All right, there we have it. That is it. Uh, this has been Spencer dispensing information. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to this podcast called the Dictionary. The first word is boot. Again, it is the fourth form transitive verb from the 15th century. One, to put boots on. To a synonym is kick. To b to eject or discharge some summarily. Summar- summarily, I got it. Often used with the word out, as in was booted out of office. Hmm. I can think of somebody who we might want to boot out of the office. Number three, to make an error on a grounder in baseball. That's the example. And then broadly, the word botch, B-O-T-C-H. Number four, oh, that was a weird burp. Number four, to ride a horse in a race, as in booted home three winners. Uh, I wonder if that's because they kick the horse with their boots uh, maybe I'm just guessing here. Uh, let's see. Number five. Oh, this is interesting. So five A and B are both. Um, oh, that's the etymology. They come. The etymology of five is the word bootstrap, which is the second form of bootstrap, which is the beginning of the next episode. So that's the etymology of number five. Just getting that out there on the front end, just so you know. So five A says to load a program into a computer from a disk. Uh, And then 5B, to start or ready for use, especially by booting a program, uh, as in boot a computer. And that is often used with the word up. I remember when we got uh, our first computer, this was in the early to mid 80s, and to load a program or to save a program uh, or, or to save a file, you would have to switch out the discs multiple times there was a uh, literally a disc a three and a half inch floppy disk for the just the system to run but then you had to put in a different disk to run the program that you wanted to run and then when you wanted to save the file you had to switch the discs like four or five times just to get the file to save oh my god the things that we had to live through you kids today you don't know you don't know Um, Okay, where are we? We are now in the intransitive definitions for the word boot. Uh, Number one, to become loaded into a computer's memory from a disk, as in the program boots automatically. Number two, to become ready for use, especially by booting a program, as in the computer boots quickly. And it sucks when they don't. And that is often used with the word up. Bootable is an adjective. Now we have the fifth form of boot. It is a noun from 1593. It is archaic. Synonyms are booty and plunder. Next is boot black. One word, noun from 1817. One who shines shoes. Next is boot camp. Two words, noun from 1916. One, a Navy or Marine Corps camp for basic training. Two, a disciplinary facility or program in which young offenders are forced to participate in a rigidly structured routine. Next is the word booted. Boot with an ED, adjective from 1552, wearing boots. Next is booty, B-O-O-T-E-E or I-E. This is a noun from 1799, A usually ankle-length boot, slipper, or sock, especially an infant's knitted or crocheted sock. Uh, And it says this is um, uh, of infant's footwear. That's what it says. They wear booties. Or sometimes if you go into a house that has, uh, you know, where you don't want to mess up the floors, you might have to put booties on your boots. All right, next we have, I think it is pronounced Bootes. Bootes, something like that. It is spelled capital B O O T E S, but the second O has the umlaut, which is the two dots. This is a noun from, oh, it does not give me a year. Um, a northern constellation containing the bright star Arcturus. This is Latin uh, from the Greek bootes, which was literally, or literally means plowman. 
uh, which is from Baus, B-O-U-S, which is a head of cattle. And there's more at the word cow. I don't know my constellations, but maybe I can find a picture of this one. All right, next we have Booth, B-O-O-T-H, noun from uh, the 13th century. One, a temporary shelter for livestock or field workers. Two, a, a stall or stand, as at a fair, for the sale or exhibition of goods. Two, b, one, a small enclosure affording privacy for one person at a time, as in a telephone booth, also as in polling booths. 2b2, a small enclosure that isolates its occupant, occupant, especially from patrons or customers, as in a ticket booth. 2b3, an isolated enclosure used in sound recording or in broadcasting, as in a radio booth. I used to record this podcast in a voiceover booth, which is what they're talking about here. Uh, but that is not happening anymore. And now my bedroom has become my recording booth. All right, now we are on 2C, a restaurant seating arrangement consisting of a table between two high back benches. This is from Middle English, both of Scandinavian origin, akin to the Old Norse booth, B-U-T-H, which means booth. It is akin to the Old English buon, which means to dwell, and there's more at the word bower or bower. Next is booty. Uh, So this one is B-O-O-T-I-E. I know we had that before, but the actual spelling of that one was B-O-O-T-E-E, and so we're getting this one again. Um, it is a variation of two things, booty with an EE, which is what we read before, or also booty with a Y, which we will be getting to in the next episode. Next is bootjack, noun from 1798, a device as with a V-shaped notch used for pulling off boots. Next is bootlace, noun from 1832, it is British And we have the synonym shoelace. By the way, I didn't notice, but we have a picture of a boot jack. Um, So it's a little wooden, looks like a wooden contraption where uh, it's like a board. And then there's a little piece under it uh, that sort of it sits on. And then on the back of it, there's a space where you can put your one foot. And then in the front of it, there's that V-shaped notch that they're talking about. And you put the back of your other shoe your other foot's boot inside and then you that helps you to pull off the boot it's a very simple but ingenious device all right next we have bootleg first form noun from 1634 one the upper part of a boot that's the part that goes on the leg number two something bootlegged as 2a synonym is moonshine 2b An unauthorized audio or video recording. Three, a football play in which the quarterback fakes a handoff, hides the ball against his hip, and rolls out. Compare to the number eight definition for the word draw. Bootleg is also an adjective. Second form of bootleg, verb from 1889, starting with transitive. 1A, to carry alcoholic liquor on one's person illegally. 1B, to manufacture, sell, or transport for sale. And then in parentheses, the example is alcoholic liquor. And then it finishes up with illegally. So to manufacture, sell, or transport for sale illegally. And alcoholic liquor is an example. 2A, to produce, reproduce, or distribute illicitly or without authorization. 2B, synonym is smuggle. Here we go with the intransitive definitions. One, to engage in bootlegging. Number two, to run a bootleg play in football. And bootlegger is a noun. I am making myself tired. It's been a long week. Next is bootless. Adjective from 1559. Synonyms are useless and unprofitable, as in a bootless attempt. Bootlessly is an adverb. And bootlessness is a noun. 
Next is bootlick. One word, verb from 1845. First is transitive. To try to gain favor with through a servile or obsequious manner. Obsequious manner. Is that in a... I think that's in a They Might Be Giant song. I was working all night in my office When a man I had recently killed Called me up from a phone near my building So I looked out the window at him He had the same obsequious manner That was the reason I had him killed uh, Now we have intransitive, to act obsequiously. Bootlicker is a noun. Obsequious is such a good word. All right, now we have boots, noun from circa 1837. It is British, a servant who shines shoes, especially in a hotel. And then our last word is bootstrap. One word, it is the first form. Second form is in the next episode. Uh, This is a noun from 1875. One, a looped strap sewed at the side or the rear top of a boot to help in pulling it on. So we got boot strap that helps you put on your boots, and then we got a boot jack, which helps you take off your boots. Oh, and then we have number two. Uh, It is plural, so boot straps, and that means unaided efforts, often used in the phrase by one's own boot straps. So we had boot, boot black, boot camp, booted, booty, booties, uh, booth, booty, bootjack, bootlace, bootleg, bootleg, bootless, bootlick, boots, and bootstrap. I am going to pick Booties with a capital B and an umlaut over the second O as the word of the episode. Because the stars and space is cool. Are cool. Yeah. Thank you very, very much for listening. And until next time, this is Spencer Dispensing Information. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to the dictionary. Uh, So, a couple things real quick. Uh, You can probably hear in the background, I have an air conditioner running because this room gets very, very warm and I didn't turn it on early enough to cool it down. Um, And it's summer in Chicago, so, uh, you know, I I don't want to be sweating for the rest of the night. Um, Also, right before I started recording, like a half hour or something, We here in Chicago had a tornado warning. Um, I guess some people claim that they saw one touch down in the Chicago area, Um, but it seems like it's passed now, so we are all good. But that was uh, a fun 20, 30 minutes or so. All right. First word for this episode is bootstrap. Second form adjective from 1926. One, designed to function independently of outside direction capable of being one internal function or process to control another, as in a bootstrap operation to load a computer. Two, carried out with minimum resources or advantages, as in bootstrap efforts. Now we have the third form of bootstrap. It is a transitive verb from 1951. To promote or develop by initiative and effort with little or no assistance, as in bootstrapped herself to the top. The top of what? The top of the car? Uh, Bootstrapper is a noun. Next we have, all right, well, this this section is going to get fun. Uh, This word is booty, B-O-O-T-Y, first form noun from the 15th century. One, plunder taken, as in war, especially Plunder taken on land as distinguished from prizes taken at sea. Well, what would those be called? Uh, Then number two, a rich gain or prize. Synonym is the word spoil. Let's see. This is modified of Middle French butin, B-U-T-I-N, from Middle Lower German but, B-U-T-E, which means exchange. So I, I don't know how they pronounce that word, that Middle Lower German word. Maybe it's booty. I don't know, Uh, but it means exchange. So, you know, that's where it it came from. Uh, Now we have the second form of booty. Could also be with an IE. Noun from uh, 1928. This one is slang. This is the one that most of us probably think of. And we have the synonym buttocks. This is an alternative of an English-based Creole word 
which is ultimately from early modified English bati, which means buttocks, uh, perhaps from the first form of the word bottom plus ie. Uh, bot, ie. Uh, so that is where booty comes from. Next is, you would not have expected to see this in the dictionary. It is booty call. Noun from 1993. Slang, of course. A phone call made to arrange a sexual encounter with someone. Also, the person to whom such a call is made. Uh, next is booze. First form, intransitive verb from the 14th century. Wow, that's old. To drink intoxicating liquor, especially to excess. Often used in the phrase, booze it up. Uh, now we have the second form of booze. It is a noun from the 14th century. Intoxicating drink, especially hard liquor. Boozily is an adverb. You can, you can booze it up boozily. And then boozy is an adjective. Next is booze hound, one word, noun from 1911. Synonyms are boozer and drunk. Next is boozer, noun from uh, 1816. One, a person who boozes. Synonym is drunk. Number two is British, a drinking place. Synonym is pub. So you can be a boozer at a boozer. Uh, boozily boozing it up. With your boozy friends. <laughs> okay. Stop having fun. Now we have the first form of bop. B-O-P. It is a transitive verb from 1928. Synonyms are hit and sock. As in, I'm making this one up, bop it. Now we have the second form of bop. Noun from 1932. A blow as with the fist or a club that strikes a person. And then the third form of bop is a noun from 1947. One, jazz characterized by harmonic complexity, convoluted melodic lines, and constant shifting of accent and often played at very rapid tempos. Uh, and then number two, we have the number two definition for the word jive. Bopper is a noun. And this is short for bebop, which I think we read a while ago, and I told my stupid story about bebop. Um, maybe I can find an example of some bebop. Here we have the fourth form of bop. It is a an intransitive verb from 1952. One, to go quickly or unceremoniously. Synonym is pop, P-O-P, as in bop into the corner store. This is often used with the word off. Number two, to dance or shuffle along to or as if to bop music. And then I'm going to add my own fifth form here, uh, I feel like in the last few years, people have been starting to use the word bop to describe uh, a piece of music that they really like. I think the young kids are saying this these days. Oh, that song bops or that that song is a bop or something. I think I've heard people say that. So, you know, maybe that's another form that they'll add to the dictionary someday. All right. Now we have an abbreviation B-O-Q, all caps. It is an abbreviation for Bachelor Officers' Quarters. Officers is plural and possessive. Bachelor Officers' Quarters. And now we have B-O-R, all lowercase, abbreviation for Burrow. B-O-R-O-U-G-H. I think those are the things that uh, they've divided New York City up into or something. Uh, I remember when somebody first told me that New York, that those sections were called boroughs. I thought that he was saying bureaus, like, I feel like, a, you know, a file cabinet called, could, could, could be called a bureau or like something where you put stuff in could be called a bureau. And I was like, what are you talking about? They're not called bureaus. I don't understand this. But then later I realized it was boroughs. Totally different word. Uh, we must be getting to that word relatively soon. 
Um, all right, next is Bora, B O R A, noun from 1839, a violent, cold, northerly wind of the Adriatic. Um, this is Italian from an Italian dialect, uh, which is Triste. I guess that's the region in Italy that this is from, uh, from the Latin word Boreas. Next, we have Boracic acid, two words, B O R A C I C noun from 1801 and we have the synonym boric acid which uh, also is coming up soon um this is uh, from the middle latin word borax which means borax next is borage or barrage b-o-r-a-g-e it is a noun from the 14th century a coarse hairy blue flowered european herb uh, parentheses, used medicinally and in salads. So this is, the scientific name is Borago or Borago officinalis. It is of the family Borag, well, I don't have to say it, Boraginaceae of the Borage family. Uh, let's see, let's look at the etymology. Um, oh, there's a few things that we don't usually see. As uh, from Anglo-French, Borage, from Middle Latin, Borago, uh, probably from the Arabic dialect word bur, burak, bur, how do you say this? I don't know. Burarak, uh, alternative of the Arabic word abuarak, literally means source of sweat. Interesting. From its use as a diaphoretic, not diuretic, but diaphoretic, D-I-A-P-H-O-R-E-T-I-C. I don't know what that is. All right, next we have borane, B-O-R-A-N-E, noun from 1916. One, a compound of boron and hydrogen, specifically a compound BH3 known only in the form of its derivatives. And number two, a derivative of borane. Next is borate, noun from 1788. That rhymed a salt or ester of a boric acid. And then last word is borated, and that's it. I, for some reason, I thought it was borated acid, uh, but the word acid is right below it, so I think that's why I made that mistake. Uh, borated, B-O-R-A-T-E-D, adjective from circa 1901, mixed or impregnated with borax or boric acid. Oh, God, I breathed in to say something, and then a little piece of phlegm went shooting down my throat and I had to cough. Hold on. <coughs> there we go. I almost coughed it up on the microphone. So we had bootstrap, booty, booty call, booze, booze hound, boozer, bop, uh, B-O-Q, B-O-R, bora, boracic acid, borage, moraine, borate, borated. Um, hmm, what direction do I want to take this? Well, I think I will just pick booze hound, as the word of the episode, because it's kind of a funny word, although you don't necessarily want to be called a booze hound. You know, everything in moderation, I'd say. Yeah, I think so. So that is it, the end of the episode. Thank you very much for listening, and until next time, this is Spencer Dispensing Information. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. I am still recording, so the air conditioner is still running. Um, All right, the first word is borax, B-O-R-A-X, First form, noun from the 14th century, a white crystalline compound that consists of a hydrated sodium borate, Na2B4O7, little dot, uh, I think that says 10H2O, that occurs as a mineral or is prepared from other minerals and that is used especially as a flux cleansing agent and water softener as a preservative and as a fireproofing agent. Uh, okay, that was a lot of stuff. This is, uh, let's see, it's from Middle English, boras, from Anglo-French, borais, from Middle Latin, borac, or borax, from Arabic, uh, burak, and from Persian, bura. So many languages that that comes from. Now we have the second form of borax. It is a noun from 1932, cheap, shoddy merchandise. Shoddy for those who don't know, is S-H-O-D-D-Y, cheap, shoddy merchandise, 
Didn't know that they called that borax. Now we have a fun word. It is borborygmus. Borborygmus. B-O-R-B-O-R-Y-G-M-U-S. Noun from circa 1724. Intestinal rumbling caused by moving gas. There's a name for that? I think I have that every day. Borborygmus. I'm going to have to try and remember this one. Uh, This is from the Greek borborygmos, uh, from borborizine, which means to rumble. Let's get ready to borborizine. Borborygmus. All right, remember that one. Next is Bordeaux, capital B-O-R-D-E-A-U-X. It is a noun from circa 1570. One, white or red wine of the Bordeaux region of France. Number two. We have the number two definition for the word claret, C-L-A-R-E-T. I think that might be another kind of wine. Uh, Let's see. Next is Bordeaux mixture. Two words, noun from 1892. Sometimes the B is capitalized. A fungicide made by combination of copper, sulfate, lime, and water. Mm, Sounds tasty. Next is Bordelais sauce. Two words, B-O-R-D-E-L-A-I-S-E, noun from 1902. A sauce consisting of stock thickened with roux, that's R-O-U-X, and flavored typically with red wine and shallots. Maybe that red wine is a Bordeaux? I don't know. Let's find out. The etymology is says it's French, Bordelais, which is the feminine of Bordelais, which is of Bordeaux the Bordeaux region, I assume. Next is Bordello. This is a noun from 1593, a building in which prostitutes are available. Uh, There is a horror movie, I think, called Bordello of Blood. I don't think I've ever seen it, but I know the title. This is Italian from Old French, Bordel, from the word Bord, B-O-R-D-E, which means hut, of Germanic origin, akin to the Old English word board, B-O-R-D, which means board, B-O-A-R-D. And if you go back to the episode where we talked about that, uh, you know, when you, when you, uh, th- th- there's boarding houses and you can board in a boarding house, you stay there. So that is where bordello comes from. Next is border. One word like the border of a country Noun from the 14th century. One, an outer part or edge. Two, an ornamental design at the edge of a fabric or rug. Three, a narrow bed of planted ground along the edge of a lawn or walk. Four, synonym is boundary, as in crossed the border into Italy. Five, a plain or decorative margin around printed matter. Bordered is an adjective, and uh, I, th- I think we can skip the etymology. Now we have the second form of border. It is a transit. No, it's a verb from the 14th century. We are starting with transitive. One, to put a border on. Two, to touch at the edge or boundary. Synonym is bound, as in borders the city on the south. And here's the intransitive. One, to lie on the border, as in the U.S. borders on Canada. Two, to approach the nature of a specified thing. Synonym is verge, V-E-R-G-E, as in borders on the ridiculous. This podcast borders on the ridiculous. Borderer is a noun. Next is border collie, two words, Uh, Noun from 1938, any of a breed of medium-sized sheepdogs of British origin noted for their herding abilities. My brother-in-law had a border collie when I first met him, and, I mean, those dogs are smart. Uh, This dog, I I mean, I assume she was, you know, at least averagely smart, if not smarter than most of them, but, man, she, uh, she was an amazing dog. Uh, she could tell the difference. Like he, he had this thing where he would say go and she would just like run around in a circle and bark, bark, bark and then come back. But she would know 
if he said a different word that rhymed with go, like foe or bow, and she wouldn't do her trick. She would only do it when you said go. Amazing. She was an amazing dog. He would, he, when he first took her on a walk, when he first got her, he patted on the ground like uh, on the sidewalk and said yes. And then he patted on the ground where there was like an alley or the street or something. And he said no. And ever since after that day, she would come up to an alley or a street and she would stop and wait for him. She, I said it four times already, but she was super smart. If I ever get a dog one day, which I do plan on doing, I would very, very much consider getting a Border Collie because they are so smart and cute. All right. Next, we have Border Row. B-O-R-D-E-R-E-A-U. Noun from circa 1858. A detailed note or memorandum of account, especially one containing an enumeration of documents. Uh, this is French, from Middle French, Bordrel, uh, probably from Bord, which means border, uh, from Old French, Bort, and there's more at the word border. Next is borderland, one word, noun from 1811, 1A, territory at or near a border. 1B, we have the 3A definition for the word fringe, as in lives on the borderland of society. 2 a vague intermediate state or region, as in the borderland between fantasy and reality. That's where I like to live. And now we have our last word for this episode. It is borderline, one word, uh, first form, adjective from 1907, 1A, being in an intermediate position or state, not fully classifiable as one thing or its opposite, as in A borderline state between waking and sleeping. That's waking life. 1B. Not quite up to, typical of, or as severe as what is usual, standard, or expected. As in borderline intelligence. Also as in borderline hypertension. 1C. Characterized by psychological instability in several areas as interpersonal relations, behavior, and identity, but only with brief or no psychotic episodes, as in a borderline personality disorder. And number two, situated at or near a border, as in a borderline town. Borderline is also a noun. So we had borax, borborygmus, bordeaux, bordeaux mixture, bordelais sauce, bordello, Border, border collie, border row, borderland, borderline. Well, if I were a different person, I would pick Bordeaux or border collie or even bordello, but I'm me, so I'm going to pick borborygmus as the word of the episode. B O R B O R Y G M U S. Thank you, thank you, thank you for listening. Uh, let everybody you know that this thing is happening. There's a, the dictionary is being read on a podcast. Rate and review. Get me up in those charts if you want. Become a patron. Send me a message. Say hi. Let me know that you love or hate this podcast. I don't care. It's just fun to do. I'm learning a lot. Like about the word borborygmus. Um, oh, we just finished page 143. This has been Spencer Dispensing uh, Information. Goodbye. <laughs>